Christ. We have a few announcements that we need to um, take care of, first of all. One <coughs> is that when you go downstairs for fellowship hour, you'll notice on the table that there are gifts that have been put together um, by Judy, and they're uh, very reasonably priced. And what she did is she took all the gifts that were left over from the fall sale she put them in mugs and put candy with them and wrapped them up and so they're very beautiful. And so for those of you who want to pick up something, uh, you know, for a what, stocking stuffer or something like that, yeah. 
So please do that. And uh, do you get the money? I guess. Oh, you don't. Get the money. <laughs> right. So Mr. Pease gets the money. Oh. Yes. Uh, well, we'll figure that out. How that how that happens. Uh, um, I want to draw to your attention also that uh, I think the point set is right, Mr. Pease will be up next Sunday, is that correct? Yes, today's the last day you can order. All right, and so we still have a few that can go, and all, we've had a healthy amount that we've already sold so far, so uh, you might want to, to look into that. Are there any other announcements at this time that need to be made? Hi, how are you today, Caroline? You okay? Okay, I'm happy that you're here. Um, do you have something to share with us today? Come here. Miriam's mother died 12 years ago on the 16th. And so what we, on the 12th, excuse me. And so what Miriam has done is she comes up and she reads this uh, um, uh, Christmas in Heaven poem in memory of her mother. And so uh, I've asked Miriam to read it and she'll do that now. Christmas in heaven. Christmas in heaven. I see the countless Christmas trees around the world they love. Like tiny lights, like heaven starts reflecting on the snow. The sight is of the secular, please wipe away the tear. For I'm spending Christmas with Jesus Christ is here. I thank you for so gift for my happy home above. I thank you each a memory of my dying love. After all, love is, love is a gift more precious than for gold. It was, it was always more important in joy Jesus told. Please love and keep each other as I thought I did to do. For I can't count the blessings or love here for you. But have a Merry Christmas and my way of here. Remember and bring Christmas with Jesus Christ is here. In loving memory of Merle Michael, enter into the Kingdom of Heaven on December 12, 1999 from her children. Miriam Michael, Paul Michael, Richard Michael. Thank you, Miriam. And those of us who remember, your mom really loved her very much, so thank you very much. And you did a wonderful job of reading. There are no other announcements? Yes, Swell? Oh, yes. We have a coffee hour, of course, and, and that's... Sawa, did you sign up for that? Yeah, so, so Sawa is responsible for coffee hour today, and I think you'll like it very much. There's candy canes and things that kids like, okay? So we want to thank you very much for that. Thank you. And are you on? We will begin our worship with silence. <laughs>
scripture verse is Matthew 2, verse 9 to 10. After they heard the king, the there, the three wise men went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where, where the child was with. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Let's rejoice this Christmas for God's enduring love for his children, thankful for the birth of our Lord and Savior, who laid aside his majesty, gave up everything for us. His birth means our salvation. Despite everything that's going on in the world today, the good news is that the Lord Jesus is relevant in our lives today, just as he was to his believers 2,000 years ago. We are thankful that he came offering hope to mankind and the great gift of salvation to those in whose lives Lord Jesus is born. We're thankful for the faith that the Lord has given us for his unending love and his sacrifice that reminds us of how fortunate we are to have found Christ without whom we would be lost. Let's pray. Lord, through your birth, we have the joy of knowing the one true and living God. Your words of assurance sees us through difficult times with an inner peace that is indescribable. God our Father, thank you for your enduring love upon us that you chose to send your only begotten Son among us that we can live a life of abundant joy through faith in your Son, both here on earth and in your kingdom to come. Help us to love, obey, and live for the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that we might live. We thank you for the joy of salvation in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming to this world and for all you do for me. Teach me to know you more and love you more with all my heart. I fear joy to know that you will be with me. I praise you. Amen. Listen to the call to worship. The Lord is the everlasting God, the recreator of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Okay, the opening hymn is, Oh Come All You Faithful, number 41.
Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Do we have any children here today? Jesus loves the little children. Missouri, <laughs> Columbia, <laughs> Columbia, where's Columbia? Oh, it's in South America. All right. Before you came here, where are you from? You don't know. I, you know what am I going to do with you? Bang you on the head. Stop it. Did you bring your brother today? <laughs> yeah, he's downstairs. He's downstairs, okay. Are you guys the children of the world? Not much. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the kind of respect I get. And I don't know. You did a great job. Did you know that? I was very proud of you. I thought that was really something. Um, okay. So what I want to talk to you about today is this, Logan. Do you know what the word happy means? You don't know what it means? Okay, what does it mean? Happy. It means that you're glad. It means you're glad. Okay, what? Joy. Oh, it means joy. You love, didn't you? Yeah, yeah I thought you Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> oh. What does it mean to be happy? You know, are you happy today? How about you, Logan? Are you, what does it mean to be happy? You don't know. Okay. <clears throat> or Rachel, Caroline, what does it mean to be happy? You don't know either? <laughs> oh, dear. Do you know that? Have you ever been happy in your life? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. What makes you happy? When something good happens. Uh, like what? Like when you get a BB gun for Christmas? No. Or a slingshot? You like that, huh? All right, that makes you happy. What else makes you happy? Anybody? Jesus. Jesus, you've been reading the book. Jesus makes you happy. You're right. What else? My birthday. When's your birthday? December 26th. December 26th. <laughs> How old will you be? Seven, eight? Eight years old. Good night. Wow. Should we sing happy birthday to you on the 26th then? It's Monday. Okay. Well, what, what, <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me. If, if you would bring your mother on Christmas, or your father, we'll sing happy birthday to you. How does that sound, Bob? Pretty good? All right. And Juliana? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so that makes you happy. Does it make you happy to have birthday parties? Good. Does it make you happy to get presents? What's your favorite present? I don't know. We're talking. You don't have any idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the truth of the matter is, is that Benjamin was really right. 
the thing that makes us the most happy, is it, the, thing, the thing that makes us the most happy is when we get, is when we get to know Jesus. All right, um, now, what song are we going to sing today? Because I need my cheat sheet. Miriam, could I have that, please? What number is it? Eight. eight. Number eight. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Who's going to sing it with me? Rohan, you want to help me? Come on. <coughs> Anybody else? Salwa, you want to come help me? Okay, come on up here. you got to stand up here so they can see you. Oh, it's number eight. Oh, you're getting so big. Number eight. Play it through, please. Your child. <laughs> now, will you please try and sing louder? Play it through one more time for them to see if you can follow. Them. Lord our God, great and mighty is He. See it simple. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up your banner and the ring. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and now try hard. Ready? Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up your head and do it.
Thank you very much, <laughs> always June, and you'll be leaving to go see your family in Korea in a couple weeks, and you'll be going, what, three weeks? Choir will be off for, what, three weeks? Something like that. So, thank you for your hard work this fall, and uh, really appreciate all the good things that you've accomplished, Lord. Thank you very, very much. Um, we turn now to our time of the concerns of the church and the church universal, of course. I have a few announcements that, uh, that I do need to raise. Uh, some of you will remember Janice Cassidy. Uh, she and her husband were part of the charter group that started the uh, Brown County um, Presbyterian Fellowship, which started in this church <coughs> with Dr. Uh, Junkin and I. And they formed uh, what a charter, probably, gosh, I don't know, was it 10 years ago now? I, I've forgotten. But uh, anyway, um, Dale, her husband, passed away unexpectedly a couple years ago, and now Janice has been in the hospital, and, we, and she's asked that we pray for her, so we will. And then there was another lady there named Melba, I believe, and she has asked that we pray for her as well. So we'll need to lift up Janice, and we'll need to lift up Melba this morning. And then there's a gentleman who was a, uh, uh, worked at uh, Stonebelt, and his name was Michael Murphy. Yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah. Yes, and he passed away, <clears throat> so we need to remember Michael Murphy and his family. Now, <clears throat> are there any other ones and other concerns? Yes? Uh, Jim Old's mother is uh, critical care ICU. She's in a coma, so I'd like the whole Old's family to be lifted up. Okay. They're having a really rough time. Uh, yes. And Jim is your beloved... Son-in-law. Here's your son-in-law, yeah. Okay. Yes, bud? It seems as though the uh, uh, Kathy's up at Mayo Clinic and uh, it seems as though they've nailed down the possibility of the problem heads. And uh, she will be there for another week. So she's grateful for all the prayers so far. We'll keep it up, she says. We'll do that. Yes. As for Judy and <coughs> Helga and Jim McCartney. Yeah. And of course, always for Jim McCartney. Yes, yes. My daughter and I appreciate all the prayers from the church. She's got one chemo to go, and then she's through. Okay. Until she starts the radiation. So oh, wonderful. We appreciate all the prayers. Well, and that's our joy, of course, and Gail Moore out there in Tucson, and or near Tucson, and you get to fly out on Thursday and be reunited with your daughter, and so that's exciting. We're happy for you. Anyone else? Yes? Colin's going to have surgery tomorrow. Your surgery? Uh, yep. Okay. Yes, sir. Thanksgiving for I use win yesterday. <laughs> and I'm trying to, <laughs> to plug this in. <laughs> You're stealing my thunder. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> for my sermon. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, then forget. <laughs> Let's not pray for that. Then. <laughs> How about prayers for Kentucky's number one seat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, the, 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 the evil empire has fallen. <laughs> That's all I was going to say. Well, it is a time of uh, happiness at any rate. Okay. Let's turn our attention to prayer. Gracious and heavenly God, we have come to you on this splendid, um, cool Sunday morning to be about worship and to be about love and to be about uh, sharing with each other, to be about uh, learning from your word, to be about learning from each other. Um, to be about the task of forgiveness, um, to be about bringing Christ deeper into our lives. All of these parts um, are why we've come today. Some have come because they're not well. Others have come because um, they need to learn more about you. Some have come to be quiet. Some have come for reasons of rejoicing. And all have come for reasons of praise. And so we thank you. 
that you called us and we heard, and we've come indeed in this fellowship, we've come from all parts of the world to gather in this church and to behave uh, like the saints in heaven. And we're grateful for that. Gracious and heavenly God, we pray for a multitude of concerns that we have, certainly joys, certainly times of happiness. We pray for all of that. Pray for travel mercies and pray for our families and pray for our friends. But we also come today um, with, um, with more than our hands filled with concerns. We pray for old friend Janice Cassidy and new friend Melba as they need to be brought back to good health. We pray for Michael Murphy's family. We pray for um, Jim Ole's mother and his family and his beloved wife Kathleen and for all, the, for all the hard knocks that they've received over the last few years. We would pray that they would be through this time of testing and that their health would return and that um, and they could get on <coughs> with leading and living a a good and health-filled life. We also pray for um, John's sister, um, Barb, and ask that you continually restore her to good health. We ask that you be with Judy and Helga, um, that you abide with them upon the loss of beloved ones, that you continually be with your servant, your friend uh, Jim McCartney, and your servant, your friend Gail Moore, and you be with her beloved mother, Evelyn, and that you grant them travel mercies, and that all are healed. We ask that you be with little Colin for his ear surgery tomorrow and bring him through this. Gracious and heavenly God, we pray for each and every one of us. We ask that you take those of us who who, who need to learn lessons in forgiveness and tolerance, and that you heal us, that you be with those who, whose hearts have been broken um, and, and who are filled with sadness, and then that you heal them, that you be with those who, who have been um, living lives in sin, that, that they be forgiven and that they brought into a, a, a new life, that those who are uh, cynical and frustrated and... Uh, um, filled with dark humor, that they would be um, repaired from such um, uh, disaster and, and brought to live in a more wholesome and, and healthy life. <clears throat> we pray for our president. We ask that you be with him and his family. We ask that he lead from your word and your life and, and not from um, um, political ambition or expediency. We ask that all opposition be loyal and truth-filled. We pray for all of our friends in South America and in the Middle East in particular, and those people who um, be brought into peace. We pray for all leaders throughout the world, that they would turn their, um, their hearts and their eyes to you. Gracious and heavenly God, we give thee thanks for this splendid day. We ask that you receive our prayers and this one too. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We thank you, and we continue now with the sharing of our tithes and our offerings. <laughs>
accept this offering that shows us the joy of giving. Amen. <clears throat> Scripture reading for today is Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 12. In the Pew Bible, page 783, and the Large Print Bible, page 1578. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Thank you, Judy. <clears throat> this is Judy's first time, and not to be your last, Judy, right? Maybe. <laughs> oh, you were splendid. Thank you. I always am, I, I tell you, preparing sermons um, are a lot of fun sometimes. And uh, I'm always amazed when, when, when I prepare a sermon that um, there's always some kind of a hitch. And I have to <clears throat> not so much be clever to get out of it, but I oftentimes have to be nimble-minded enough to try and figure something out. So, um, and then Dr. Odad comes and spoils my, my sermon. Which one? The bad doctor. <laughs> not the good doctor. <laughs> We have three good doctors Hadad in this fellowship and one very bad doctor. <laughs> well, everybody knows, almost everybody knows, I do not have a problem with feelings. I, I just distrust them. That's all. <clears throat> I, I have a real problem, as you will know, with equating anything that necessarily feels good with necessarily having anything to do with God. Because just because something feels good, or you think it feels good, that's all it does. It's just a feeling. And you've heard me go on and on, and I'm sure that 99% of the people uh, in this 19th year still disagree with me, and that is that love is not a feeling, it's a behavior. And I clearly understand that very few people agree with me, except the wisest. Now, so what happens is you come to the question of joy, and that's what we're going to be um, meditating on, on this morning, <clears throat> the, the joy candle, for example. A little bit of background. Um, we were talking about this in, in the adult study this morning, is if you take the Hebrew word for joy, one of the interpretations of it is ecstasy. But it's religious ecstasy. I don't know if that makes a whole lot of difference, but uh, anyway, and that is a feeling. And you find the people uh, of Israel, when they would, this is interesting, when they would go into the temple and worship God, they would be filled with this great joy, this ecstasy in, in their worship. And so their worship wasn't unpleasant, it wasn't painful, it wasn't shame-provoking, it wasn't guilt-producing. Um, it, was it was a time of great and deep and profound joy. And so I'll be the first one to, to admit that, at least in the Old Testament, the idea of joy does have an element of a feeling that goes with it, of emotion, I should say. Now that said, I was, th I was trying to think last night, and then I figured it this morning out pretty well, um, I, I, I didn't get to watch TV last night because I was busy. 
okay? Doing the Lord's work. So, okay. <laughs> While your children were at the Assembly Hall. I think they were, weren't they? Not yeah. the children, only the adults also. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, the evil empire came to town, and I, I, <laughs> I didn't, I forgot to watch the game. That's the truth. I, I, I was working on my sermon, and I was doing some, some reading, and, and that was that. And so I just hopped in bed and, and forgot all about it. So I got up this morning around 4, something like that, 4.30. <clears throat> and that is true. That's when I usually get up. And I turn on the TV, and I hit ESPN, and all of a sudden I see this mass of red pouring out of the stands in Assembly Hall. And I go, what? <laughs> the wicked witch is dead. Yay! <laughs> and this joy, this euphoria. Okay. And uh, the, the, the unshackling, and, and that's the key that we're going to be talking about, the unshackling of something that has been over uh, the basketball program at IU and frankly over a lot of the, uh, uh, the athletic department do for all sorts of reasons that, 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 that they have been in bondage. And that, and that what you saw in this, in this event, uh, which certainly doesn't compare to uh, uh, the, the, the liberation of Omaha and Normandy, uh, but nonetheless, there, there's something about that. <clears throat> and the joy and the release that comes with farming, liberation from bondage, from oppression. Okay. And I would say that I was going to predict the victory, but nobody would have believed me. So, <laughs> by a, a last second shot with uh, a few seconds to go, and nobody would have believed me, but anyway. <laughs> How'd I do? Pretty good? <laughs> For a long time I have marveled how the first receivers of the Christ child were the less and least fortunate in Palestinian society. They were the marginalized, the disenfranchised. I have absolutely no doubt this was uh, intentionally planned out by God. I have absolutely no doubt this clear and unflinching lesson has been minimized and downplayed by the church today, and not only today, for hundreds of years. And I would argue, I would argue, it is among other reasons why so few people have um, a real good idea who Jesus really is. Jesus today, certainly in America, is proffered as a comfort food. Packaged and advertised from pulpits and televisions as something or someone or some power that makes us feel good makes us feel good maybe because we're going to get to go to heaven, makes us feel good because the bad guys are all going to be zapped up when we go to Raptureville, um, uh, whatever it might be, makes us feel good because President Bush is the evil uh, president, he's no longer president, you know, that's preached from pulpits too. I mean, what, whatever it is, Jesus is made to feel, make us feel good and to justify our feelings that, that make us feel good. In this regard, the real Jesus has been ripped away from what he was truly about, and he's been transplanted in, in our culture in particular. And now Jesus is benign, harmless, toothless, sweet, cuddly, and a friend to all. He now sits in yards surrounded by Santa, Rudolph, and Frosty the Snowman, and this is called the Christmas Spirit. I drive down the road and I see Jesus in the manger and uh, I have uh, you know, Rudolph peering over and I go, nothing says the Savior like that. <laughs> this is shameful. <clears throat> I have no problem with Santa Claus. I have no problem with Santa Claus. <laughs> I have no problem with Rudolph. I have no problem with Frosty the Snowman. I have no problem with the Grinch that stole Christmas. 
And no, I'm not the Grinch that's stealing Christmas. <laughs> I have no problem with that. I have a problem with them, in the, with them being in the manger with Jesus. That's what I have a problem with. I have a problem with them being in pulpits. I have a problem with them being in churches. I have a problem with them being in creches. I have a problem with that. And it's shameful, and it's shameful because it vulgarizes the meaning of Christmas. It cheapens it. It makes it a cartoon for crying out loud. And because it vulgarizes Christmas, it also vulgarizes joy. For joy is what Jesus brings, but not with Santa in tow. And not with little elves. I, I've said this before. I'll say it again. I, I, I'm, we really, I, I, we really, the reason I like the cross, among other reasons, is that the the reason Jesus is born is to get on a cross, not on a sleigh. For crying out loud. Jesus brings joy on Christmas and joy means liberation. Joy is the first fruit of liberation. When you are set free, you become joyful. And yes, I am serious, uh, obviously on a much different level, but there, uh, and I'm going to do it, this, this basketball program has been in bondage to a bunch of cone heads that ran the program into the ground. And now what you saw is the first fruits of liberation. And when you have liberation, you have joy. Now that's on obviously on a sort of a secular level, so keep it there. I'm not trying to compare um, well, sort of comparing the death of Satan with the death of Kentucky, but, um, but no, you get the comparison. Liberation is, uh, is what Jesus brings, and the first fruit of liberation is joy. People who are free celebrate joy. As I have complained about forever, um, is that we impose our cultural trappings onto Jesus. And some people are getting that message. I, somebody said it today, and I, I said, ah, they're learning it. <clears throat> we impose what we want Jesus to do and to be based on what our culture, our primary and individual culture, has taught us to impose upon Jesus. And so we outfit him in the clothing that makes us feel good so that we can recognize him and he's part of our club and he's part of our team and he's part of our clan. And so he wears the same stuff, he thinks the same stuff, he talks the same stuff, you know, and if he's in the South, it's Bubba Jesus and, and, and you know, if he's someplace else, so I'm not a picking on the South, I'm saying this is what we do. And so what we do is we recreate Jesus in our image and therefore, uh, that has nothing to do with who Jesus really is. And so the problem is our view of Jesus in 2011 is most certainly not who Jesus was 2,000 years ago and who Jesus is today. And this is serious stuff. And because of this, we confuse feeling good about the, the Christ that we created. And we, can, you know, we get confused about the... the the, the feeling good about the Jesus that we have made in our image with the joy that um, occurred on the first Christmas morn. And we, 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 we equate them. And they have nothing to do with each other. This is wrong. Joy for Jesus is liberation. The angelic announcement to the shepherds is about freedom. This is what the angel says. I bring you good news of a great joy. And this great joy is I'm bringing you freedom. I'm bringing you liberation from bondage. 
I'm giving you something society cannot, will not, and never can give you. I'm giving you something that's imperishable. I'm giving you something that lasts forever. I'm giving you something that will restore you, renew you, recreate you, and fill you with contentment. I am bringing you liberation. So Jesus brings freedom to the world, and he begins, and it is significant, with second and third class citizens of the world, to the women disenfranchised, uh, uh, treated as chattel, treated as sex objects. They're still treated that way, unfortunately. Children, children. He, he comes to children. He comes to the disfigured, the maimed, the crippled, the poor, the blind, the incarcerated, the broken, the dying, the diseased, to the oppressed. I didn't write that. That's what the book says he did. And those are the people he comes to. It is true he comes to the wealthy. Somewhat. But for all, his message is this. I come to release you from your bondage. And this is why the message remains relevant today. Because the freedom that Jesus secures for us is primarily the freedom that he secures for us from the ultimate bondage, and that is sin. Or, if you like my words, that's selfishness. From narcissism. From having to have our way. From being babies instead of adults. He frees us from that. He frees us from that childishness. From that, from being tantrum filled. And pouty. And whiny. And that's all that's a result of sin. And he delivers us from that, that oppression, that sorrow, that weight. And so the sweetest words that Jesus delivers are these. You are forgiven. That means you are now free. Forgiveness is the perfect Christmas present. And freedom is the perfect way of life. Amen. Now, <clears throat> I hope everyone can sing better than they did with the children. <laughs> I think everyone knows this, so please stand and let us share together a little town of Bethlehem, uh, number 44. Please stand.
gracious and heavenly God, this perfectly good and cold and crisp uh, winter day, we give thee praise and sing to you thanks. We ask that we would become ambassadors of the faith, that we can spread the good news about forgiveness, that we can love people, and that we can be Christ-like with all. And we do so and ask that the blessings of Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior, rest upon each and every single one of us, now and forevermore. Amen.